Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now in this tutorial I want to look at adding fake starburst to the light sources in this image which is the street lamps along the seafront of the beach where I live and I will also add a lens flare basically just to show you how that is done also and this is, if I zoom in, you can see the starburst on these street lamps and the lens flare. That is there, go back to the original one. Now before I proceed, I'd just like to acknowledge the fact that this is an adaptation of a Photoshop tutorial as found on the CD from the Digital Photo magazine, which is an excellent magazine, good read and as it says it comes with a CD with tutorials on it which although are for Photoshop can quite a lot of times be adapted for use with Photo Plus. So to get started on this tutorial I just need to make a little bit of preparation and the first thing I want to do is to make a new brush tip category because it is the brush tool that we I'm using to add the starbursts to these light sources. So I come to the brush tip menu and as you can see from this drop down menu there's many categories here but I need to make a new category and this little white downward arrow which is the brush tip menu I click on that then add a category you need to name the category and I'll call this starburst and then click OK. And as you now see that Starburst has now been added to that list of categories. So that's that bit of preparation done. Next bit of preparation is I need to make a new document. So I just come up to File and New. And the New Image Document Properties panel will open. Now the largest size that you can make a brush in Photo Plus is 1000 by 1000 pixels. In the Photoshop tutorial, the person who did it, they started off at a 2000 by 2000. But you can't do that with Photo Plus, you have to start with 1000 by 1000 or smaller. And then the resolution is 300 and the background was white. Okay and then we have your new square white document. Now you don't need to do this but I'm going to make two more new documents in exactly the same settings. So I should now have three of them. Yes we go. And I'm going to first of all you need to make a new blank layer so you come down to the layer display area and down here in the bottom corner there's a white square with a cross in it. Just click on that. You don't need to name it but you can if you want. Click OK. And there you have your new blank layer and, and it is on to this layer that I'm going to be drawing the start of the starburst. Now in the Photoshop um, tutorial they use the pencil tool which can be found with the brush tool here in Photo Plus but it doesn't work quite the same way in Photo Plus so what I'm having to do is use the line tool which you probably got the pen tool showing so you just come to the sub menu of the pen tool and you have the line tool so next you want to make sure that your Weight is possibly about around about the 10 pixel size, opacity is 100, and that your foreground color is black. And then we're not going to be drawing, a, I'm going to be drawing a line straight down, but I'm not going to go right to the top or right to the bottom. Um, I'm going to come down to about there and roughly in the center and then hold down the shift key so it will draw a straight line 
and then draw downwards until I'm roughly about the same distance from the bottom as I was from the top. Let go of both the mouse button and the shift key and the black line is now drawn on that blank layer. Now next we're going to add an effect which is blur and motion blur. Now this is still preset from the, the test that I did earlier but if I put it back to where it, where it was which was distance was zero and the angle was zero. I think that's the default settings. And what you want is for the angle to be 90 degrees so this will be pointing straight up or you can just type 90 into there but just point it straight up to 90 and the distance is roughly around 70 and as you can see this stretches the line so you are now getting nearer to the top and bottom but not quite at the touching the edges but it's also it fades out the ends of these lo this line so then click OK right so that is the first part of this done now I'm going to cheat here slightly I'm going to going to copy this layer and then go to these other two versions that I've made so I don't have to keep repeating that bit on the on the other ones when I, sh I show you what I'm going to do with the other parts so going back to where you would be up which is having your first layer with the line on what you need to do is just right click on this and duplicate it so you now have two layers exactly the same and then come up to the deform tool now if you come near to the top of this line as you can now see it's got the the bounding lines around it you can click and drag and rotate this layer but it's also easier if you hold down the shift key and then click and rotate and it will rotate in 15 degree steps which makes it easier not to make any mistakes so do that so it now is straight line horizontally and then come to this layer right click and then merge down so now you have one layer that's got both crosses on so what you need to do now is duplicate that layer again so as this layer is highlighted right click come up to duplicate and again hold down the shift key and rotate if you rotate three times there you go you now have an eight point starburst so again right click this top layer and merge down so then all we need to do to that is to add some blur but this time it's going to be Gaussian blur so effect blur Gaussian blur and you just want to make it probably four maybe five pixels and as you can see it is now blurring these edges so that not so squared off and now more like points if you go too far the whole thing looks a bit fuzzy like that's on seven it's not really what we're after so around four or five it's even five on this particular one makes it a bit too fuzzy I think I'll stick on 4.4 .4 and then click OK I'll just come away from the deform tool 
I'll just come on to the rectangle tool. Which is what, in fact, what we need next is the rectangle selection tool. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole starburst effect. Just nudge it over slightly. And try and get it central within that square. That's about it. So with the selected area made, if you come over to the brush tip panel where I have made this starburst thing, if you right click anywhere within this area, you get the menu. And if you come up to define brush, it will ask you for a name. So I'm just going to call this Starburst 8 points. I click OK. And as you can see, we now have a new brush that is made up from the this image here. Now I called it 8 points because there are 8 points on the star. A bit corny, I know, but... So what I'm going to do now is this layer here, I'm going to duplicate that again. Click OK. Come to the Deform tool. Now the using the click, uh, the shift method on this will not work so well because the you don't need it to go around in 15 degree increments. So this one is more a case of doing this by eye. I'm trying to just get that with even spacing around there, which is that's pretty good. So I again come to the rectangle selection tool and make a selection. there. So again, right click in here, define brush, and this one will be starburst 16 points. So now we have two brushes made for starburst, one with eight points in the star and one with 16 points in the star. Um, now the only thing to remember here is that the size of these will be 940 pixel and this one's 956. I don't think you'll ever really get it exactly the same, but which does mean that when you use this um, brush, it will always start out at that size, but I'm going to be looking at that a little bit later. So. Going on to one of the other ones I've made here. I'm doing it this way rather than keep using undo to keep going backwards. So I have the original layer here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that once. I'm going to come to the deform tool and I'm going to again bring this to there and then I'm going to duplicate that again and hold down the shift key and I'm going to bring this one backwards so I have a six point star now you see so what I'm going to do I'm going to merge that one down and then right click and merge that down use a rectangle selection tool and again make a selection area for that right click in here define brush and again starburst six points 
So I've now got three different Starburst brushes. Now I think that from my little test I've found that the, the 6.1 and the 16.1 is either too little or too, ma too many stars bursts. Uh, but the 8.1 is probably the best one to use, 9 times out of 10. But I've made three different ones, so you do have a choice to vary it however you want. Now lastly, this last one, which I've set up here, is something you can do to all of yours if you want to. Um, let me just duplicate this layer first. Come to the deform tool, shift, bring that round, merge down, and then duplicate that again. There you go. I'm just doing this quickly. Where is it? Merge down. That's it. Now, like I said before, these will all start at a very big size. And I have found myself personally that nine times out of ten, the size of the brush only needs to be around the hundred mark. But as we started off at a thousand and then use the selection tool to highlight and make the brush tip, the brush tip is virtually almost a thousand in size. Now you could try and start off making one with a smaller white background uh, new document but I found that quite hard to really gauge how well it's going to blur and stretch on, the, on a small document. So I found it best to start off on the a thousand size and if necessary once you had that ready you can lower the image size and make it let's make it 150 in pixels I'll just raise this up as you can see it gets a bit pixelated at that size but I will make a selection of that there and then define that again just right click in that area click define brush and I'll call that star burst 8 point small click OK now you can see that is going to be 142 whereas the other 8.1 is 940 oh, we'll look at how that affects the different images so that is basically I've made four brushes different starbursts that we can you can use on your pictures so if I go back to my picture here I will just zoom in a bit so you can see which one I'm going to use and if I come to the brush tool and then make sure that white is your foreground color you can just switch the colors over so white is your foreground color and then select one of the brushes so if I s select this one as you can see, it's going to start out huge. Um, but obviously you can lower the size down to whatever. And like I said, I find about a h around a hundred mark on all the images that I've tried is about right. In fact, even that might be too, too big. Let me come back down a bit. Right, that's on the 56. So, and also if you put a little tick into the airbrush option, which just means if you hold down the, keep the mouse button held down, it will add a bit more pa uh, paint to the image. Try and put the light source in the middle of that circle. 
then hold down and then you may need to just click a couple of times just to keep adding a bit more paint to that image and there you go you have an eight point star on that light now if I try the smaller version I made as you can see that is the start off position is already quite low so let's come down to this one and they just no, I forgot to put a tick in the airbrushing so I just got to keep pressing the button without trying to move it too much and build up that star that way so if I go to the 16 point star again it starts off huge let's bring the size down got a tick in airbrush and I'll pick this one here See, I think that's 16 is probably a bit excessive. I think 8 is much better, but we'll and I'll just try the 6.1 again, lower the size down, and oh, I forgot to put I keep forgetting to put the airbrush option on, which means you just have to keep clicking lots of times. but. Yeah, you see that one is less effective. That's probably a bit too. The six point is sort of a bit naff, really, and the sixteen point is a bit excessive. So the eight point one is probably your your probably go to one nine times out of ten. So let me just go back to the small version or ticking airbrush. Lower the size down. And I'll just finish off adding starbursts to the rest of these lights here. Right, so if I zoom out a bit, you can see the starbursts on all those lights there. Now the last thing I want to look at is to add a lens flare. Now this really would probably only really work in a daytime picture I assume but they they did this in the magazine so I'm going to give that a go as well. So you come to effect render lens flare and then you have the different options of whether you use a normal lens flare, a 35 millimeter lens flare, or a 105 millimeter lens flare. And as you can see, as I clicked through the different ones, the different effect on how that lens flare shows up on your image. And also, you can move where this lens flare is originating from so you could pick any of the light sources but I'm going to pick the one in down here which would be like almost a light that was looking directly at the camera you can alter the brightness of that and as I just want a sort of subtle effect because it does add its own sort of starburst as well and then just click OK so if I zoom in now as you can see I've got the brightest light in the center which is creating a lens flare or a false lens flare on the front of the lens of the camera and then the starbursts are on all the other light sources now obviously you can get starbursts within the camera itself before you even start because you would need to have, I'm pretty certain it's a low 
a smaller aperture when you take the picture you know, like f16 f22 something like that um, and that will help give you the starburst effect when you take the picture itself so you wouldn't have to rely on faking it but if you haven't got starburst and you want starburst you can make brush tips to suit and use them on your images and or add a lens flare like I have done here so I hope that has been useful to everybody uh, thank you for watching and goodbye